Hello, Noah here, and welcome to part 37 of my Contempt of Court Let's Play, and uh, I'm supposed to be on break right now, actually, but uh, I felt like recording, so I'm going to record, and um, <clears throat> I don't know when this video will come out, I'm, as I said, I'm supposed to be on a channel break right now, but uh, maybe it'll come out this Friday, I'm recording this on the 25th, so maybe it'll come out on the... Uh, what would it be, the 30th or the 29th? Uh, but it might come out then, it might come out later, who knows. But all I know is that I'm recording right now, so let's just get into it. I'm no killer. I'm just an innocent grifter turned head of an ex-smuggling ex ring. Oh, it's five it's f fucking minute in, I'm already losing my words. Smithy copied the, bogey, the, the boogeyman's M.O. to lead Jimmy to me, holy shit. And the fingerprints on the wire? He mimicked mine! Everything that went on in that room was Smithy's doing! All I did was wait for him to bring home the bacon. Then I served our, severed our agreement when he tried to hoard the fortune for himself. The issue here is those damn fingerprints. Since they're impossible to tell apart, I can't confidently say they're hemlocks. I wonder if there's some other way to prove hemlock did all this. You sure that's what happened? <laughs> Seriously, champ? You want to argue with me? You bet I do. Carefully. Well, good, because that's what I want you to do. If anything, you all need proof that I'm in control. So give it your best shot, champ. Or don't, because in the end, I'm always right. You got some mad bags under your eyes, bro. You need some sleep. You need, like, a Snickers bar and, like, a good-ass nap. That's what you need. I'm going to save here just in case um, uh, this case decides to pull a uh, turnabout big top and I get penalized for pressing. Just in case. Uh, oh, well, that makes everything better, I guess. Doesn't it, though? Now, they, now you're thinking the way you're supposed to. Either he's incapable of reading sarcasm or he's convinced himself I was being factual. Either would be very worrying. Hold on to that mindset, Nikki, as we continue. So by saying that, you admit that you are the boogeyman? No, because he kills people. All I care about is everything being right and happy in the world. Being held hostage in a room full of people by a maniac and his band of merry men? Oh boy, I'm feeling happier already. But what about James Trent then? How would Renwick know he'd catch on to the M.O.? Because Jimmy's a touch obsessed with finding the guy. He uses whatever underhanded technique he can to track down Easter egg after Easter egg. So while Smithy helped Brisbane to try on his new shiny necklace, that wasn't the only thing he did to frame me. Why would he go that far? To burn off his own fingerprints and artificially duplicate yours? You know what it's like to have an obsessive fan, Nikki. Of course you don't. Smithy here is quite the fan of yours, truly no doubt inspired by my ambitious spirit. Right? Whatever you say. Oh, it's true. But some crazy fans have been known to resort to some pretty extreme stuff. Case in point. Everything, huh? Everything, huh? No second person, no second place, no second seconds, no second anything. As per your deal for him to make off with the Enigmium, I asked him to leave it in a designated drop-off point for me to pick it up. But you brought the Enigmium into court earlier today. We can't rely on your word that you found it at Renwick's apartment. My word ain't reliable. That what I just heard from you, Slick? Oh, shit. Oh, God. Bro. Five of his goons just cocked all of their guns. Holy shit. Uh, d did that sound like can't? I said can. No need to repeat yourself, Nikki. Hear you loud and clear, champ. No way did this happen. 
He's twisting this whole thing around with a false retelling of the truth. And with backup from his Aculus goons, who's going to stand up to him? Me. That's who. I'm going to show everyone that this version of the truth is a big fat lie. You know what? That's fair. I guess I could believe that. There's nothing I can say to disprove that. This is the one. Oh, shit. I'm gonna save here. And, uh... uh mysterious Bottle. Is there time for that yet? Is there time for the bottle yet? I don't think so. Bears docks that went on in that room. Bears docks and Volper's prints. Yeah, I think the the knife might be the answer here. Oh. Shit. Okay, so not the knife. Uh... Bears Detective like Smith's Prince, yeah. Hold on, let me go and read again. All I did was wait for him to bring home the bacon. I think it's time for the... Did I present the bottle yet? No, I think I thought about presenting the bottle, but I didn't actually present it. Objection. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, so... What about Perry... No, no, no. What about Volper? To this? Objection. No. Okay. Um... I really don't want to use the guy again. I'm tired of doing that. Objection. Device? Nah. What about the mug? That has not been explained yet. Objection. Nope. I'm trying every possible thing I can. What about the bag? Objection. Nah, not the bag. You know, it could be this one because there's no card piece. Garot wire is the only proof I have of B being behind these killings. I think it might be the notepad. Objection. It's not the notepad. Okay. Should I try Perry Docks here? Objection. Nope. I've tried almost everything I can think of. Maybe it's this? Objection. No. I'm lost. It's lost on me. I have to look at the guide for this one. Excuse me? What? Um... Rizbane's jacket? How how does how does that correlate? This is talking about the uh, the the Perry Docks murder, right? Where um, Hemlock is claiming that Smith tried to use the Boogeyman's mo to get James Trent on the case, or is this talking about or or, or is this talking about the the the, the Brisbane assault case? I'm confused on what's being discussed here now because apparently this is the answer. I Okay. 
Credit where credit's due. You're right on a few things. It'd be hard right now to determine the owner of the prints found at the scene. Everything seems to point to Renwick right now. But assuming that Renwick left those traces, then one piece of evidence defies that logic. The victim's jacket. The jacket. The Cyclops' jacket is your, is your proof that I'm wrong. Impossible, but do go on. I'd like the prosecution to repeat its theory from earlier concerning this jacket. Ah, but with pleasure. That smile. What's that smile all about? You've already forgotten, or did you force yourself to forget once again? My theory concerned the fact that the inside of the victim's jacket is drenched in blood, and yet not a trace can be seen on the exterior, because the assailant used this to not only contain the blood, but to paint the crime scene. Hence the victim and his jacket were hidden from sight in the kitchen cabinet. To fool the unsuspecting detective. Yes, yes, I remember this theory now. But how does it retract blame from the defendant specifically? Assuming the jacket was used that night to temporarily hide evidence of foul play, why would Detective Smith bother to do that? What would he stand to gain by hiding the body from himself? What? I... I can see where it's going with this, but I... I also feel like... Like, Hemlock could just claim that Smith did it all himself, and he, and he wasn't trying to hide it from himself. He just hid the body, and... I... I don't know, maybe I'm missing a few details. If I'm missing a few details, then let me know. The, uh, just let me know in the comments if I'm just missing something, and I, I just forgot something. But, uh, yeah, it's lost on me. I see where you're coming from. I don't. I can't imagine Detective Smith would have, would have, would have had much reason to do that. Not to mention, why would he remove the victim's jacket? That is a good point. That is a good point. But still, I don't know how that correlates to the statement. Like, I don't know how it contradicts it. But. Again, if it was talking about the Brisbane assault case, then yeah, I, get, I, I do see how that could contradict it. But I, I legitimately thought it was talking about the Doc's murder thing. I don't know why I thought that. That's my fault. So let's explore the alternative, shall we? The answer is he didn't. Someone else was trying to hide the scene from him. And who's the only other person who supposedly knew of the plot to kill Brisbane? You, Lyle Hemlock. You're the one who arrived at 4.30 a.m., half an hour before the two men's scheduled meeting. With the intent to murder Brisbane before Rinrick arrived. 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 Shit. Where'd this theory come from? A Christmas cracker? Are you just reading out one of those jokes? Because this is the... Because this is the unfunniest one yet. And that's saying something about cracker jokes. Your reactions are giving you away, you know. My reactions... Look, I don't think you realize the snag in your little story. Why would I beat Brisbane to a bloody pulp knowing full well that Smithy was on his way? Ah, but that wasn't the assailant's initial plan. He tried to strangle Brisbane first with this wire. But Brisbane must have either been incredibly lucky or, is it, or, or was anticipating it, because he broke free and tried to fight them off. And so fighting back was a spontaneous plan B for the assailant. Or rather, Plan L, or whatever you plan, or whatever your plan letter was at the time. As such, you were expecting a quick, clean kill. You certainly weren't anticipating the blood, especially so much, which is why you had to act fast to make sure none of it dripped on the floor. Oh, sure, sure. I always wear a, du a full double-breasted suit to bed too. Guess me and Brisbane got something in common, huh? Look, champ, buddy, buckaroo, matey, blokey, geezer, glad. Seems you've forgotten what Dandy Boy was talking about earlier. Brisbane was bruised all over and bled through his shirt, according to this photo. Surely that would explain the jacket's interior. I disagree. Look again at the photograph, right? The blood stains on his shirt were exterior, possibly caused by his facial bleeding. Am I to remind you that he isn't even wearing the jacket? And even if he did wear it at the time, why would the assailant choose to remove it? Hmm... Mr. Brisbane wasn't wearing his jacket. How did the inside get so bloody? I never specifically stated whether Brisbane was wearing it or not. Okay, let me put it in a another way for you knuckleheads. If I really was the guy he had a fight with. Well, look at me. You see any bruises? Uh, no, actually. 
except the ones under your eyes, but they just look like you haven't slept in days. I, had, I said that earlier. But what if he never hit you on the head? Ha! Guess you'll have to take my word for it then. I've had a thought regarding Brisbane's hemophilia. If Hemlock claims to be a cognizant of everything, what if this was such one? What if this was one such fact? Then naturally, you would f refrain from attempting to draw blood. Hence, the strangulation attempt. Perhaps early in the fight, you managed to knock Brisbane out. Hence, those head injuries. But all the same, you wished for the blood to come into play with painting the crime scene. So you laid the jacket underneath him. Then took it upon yourself to engage in a little anger man management therapy. Holy shit. Deal. That's, that's fucking metal. Unleashing your pent up res re resentment towards the man who had what you wanted. The Enigmium. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was in a courtroom, not a Mensa meeting. Then how do you explain the trash room, geniuses? Smithy would have come in, seen the mess, and known something was wrong. Well, let's not rule out the possibility the assailant trashed the room afterwards. You could have easily done so as part of the half hour, half an hour time frame to create the scene. And with Miss Weaver next door heading out, you could have made as much noise as you wanted. Surely the defendant would have laid eyes upon the scene. He would suspect. suspect he would suspect foul play if he'd seen the room had been ransacked. Hence the assailants need to enforce the facade that the event never happened. Hiding the body and the blood in the cabinet before Smith had arrived. And then bringing out and destroying the room after he left. And Hemlock, by saying what you just said a moment ago, Smithy would have come in, seen the mess, and known something was wrong. You pretty much confirmed Runwick was not the assailant. What? N n no, I didn't. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Next one to make a noise gets this gavel cracked over their head! Ugh, get a grip, Lyle! Take control! You really trust Grandma's word? That much over the guy she saw, huh? Did you also believe her over that mask he was wearing? Don't that just add a little dash of doubt on his attentions that night? The mask. That's the one thing I don't understand. Based on the circumstances, the man Miss Weaver saw had to have been Rinwick. That's the only way to prove the second person was the assailant. And Rinwick thought he was going to meet Brisbane, so why the mask? Yes, I admit I don't understand why an innocent man would don such a disguise. Come on, Phoenix, think. Why would Rinwick have chosen to wear a mask? Hold it. Why did Rinwick, Rinwick and, Eve, and Brisbane even organize a meeting at 5 a.m.? They must have had something really sensitive to discuss. Perhaps... Remind me again, Hemlock. What was the purpose of the meeting between those two? Suicidal Smith just gave you a whole testimony's worth of answers, you chump. He enlisted my help to nab a really expensive eyeball. He got close to Brisbane in hopes he'd have the perfect opportunity. But ripping someone's fake eye out... Ripping someone's fake eye out of their face in public is kind of awkward for everybody. So you thought 5 a.m. was a suitable time to strike? Assuming Brisbane doesn't sleep with the damn thing in, it was the perfect time to strike. Observe. Why, whoever could that be at the, at the door at this hour but by crikey? It's so disturbing. Rick, what are you doing here? It's 5 in the morning. Sorry if I woke you, Raw, but there's something I need to talk to you about. And no, we can't wait until morning. Okay, buddy. Come in, come in. Make yourself at home. I'll just go and put some tea on in, and then you can... Ah, Renwick, what the... Ah, ah. I knew, I knew you were gunning for my eye. You and Hemlock, you're not taking it from me without a fight. Oh. Ah. Crash bang wall up and you get the idea. Based on a true story. Gift shop's on the way out. Does this gift shop sell sedatives? Damn. I can't... But I can't help but feel he missed out a glaring detail. What about Renwick's mask? Where did that come into play into your, in your puppet show? That is what we were just discuss, discussing after all. Because, Mr. Chatty audience, he didn't have it on. So Granny... 
Scroggin saw Renwick wearing a mask. Yeah, big deal. She never said anything about entering the house with a mask, did she? What? So wait, if Hemlock asserts Renwick only wore the mask on his way out, why even bring one at all? What purpose did the mask serve other than to get Miss Weaver's attention? get her testimony. So there you go. I guess the mask wasn't important after all. Don't know why Smithy took a mask with him, but it was his plan, his rules. I don't think so. More like it was your plan and your rules. Wha the mask is very important, actually, considering you know so much about when and where he wore it, as your puppet show revealed. So with that in mind, I've just figured out why Wernrick even brought a mask at all. Play a joke on Brisbane. Well, let me save here. I need to take a drink real quick. My throat. Uh, you told him to. <clears throat> to avoid recognition, I don't think so. Now, sometimes the simplest explanation is the most truthful. Occam's razor. The reason Renwick wore a mask was because you told him to. Getting tangled with a man like Hemlock can only mean trouble. You've all seen today what he's capable of. So he had no qualms about letting Renwick take all the blame. In this case, creating a witness out of Miss Weaver. Brisbane's next door neighbor who would easily recognize Renwick's voice. Why are you letting this happen to you, Lyle? You were in control, you were in control, you were in control, you were in control! You think I knew Grandma would leave her house at that exact time? As a matter of fact, I do. I find it hard to believe it was a coincidence. But wait a moment, right? Are you under the assumption that Hemlock ordered Detective Smith to, bri to visit Brisbane at 5 a.m.? Because you do remember this, don't you? Oh. Handwriting analysis proved the author of this note to have been Brisbane. And based on where it was found, I would doubt Hemlock's knowledge. Brisbane himself instigated the 5 a.m. rendezvous, I'm afraid. Well done, Eddie. Good boy. See, Nikki? The early morning tea party wasn't my doing. No, it was Brisbane's. And wait, by that logic, your puppet show made no sense. Renwick didn't just drop by unannounced, he was arriving at the agreed-upon meeting. So Brisbane knew that Renwick was coming by at 5 a.m. So I'm willing to wager a little theory. Renwick didn't tell you about the meeting, did he? In your own mysterious ways, you found out by yourself. Stop that, man. You're gonna... No, I'm just gonna let him do this for a little bit. Maybe I'll knock some sense in them. You're gonna develop like at least seven concussions. No, that's not true, you liar! We struck up the plan together, me and Smithy, but I didn't know when and where he'd strike. So that's your so that's your claim Oh god. So that's your claims of me being the second person down the pan. You expect me to believe that, Mr. Know it all? You can repeat my conversations word for word, yet you can't you yet you didn't know the crime? I'm having a hard time believing that myself. Are you saying that the defendant didn't consult you before heading to the victim's house? That's exactly what I'm saying. And even if there was a second person there, you can't prove that it was me. Because I didn't know! Is he really going down that road again? You can't prove I was even there in the first place. And that proves your ignorance of over the crime? Correct, I'm glad you agree. Let me explain why. Okay. I need a second. Okay. Brisbane temporarily came came to at 5.30 a.m. Then he sought out to out his attacker. He crawled across the floor to the phone like the mouse he is. The phone call was traced to the address where they found an exterminated pest. It was definitely Brisbane. Listen to the tape again. I can't stress enough to listen to the part where he states Smithy did it. Till the police got wind of the situation, I didn't know a thing about it. Huh. That's interesting that you say that. After just saying that Brisbane said that Smithy did it. Oh boy. Once I found out, I became Robert Snow again and went about protecting my client. <laughs> just realized I made quite a few ro rodent puns there. Apologies, but when I think of Brisbane, pathetic little rats are all I can think about. How, Preto, was that argument supposed to prove your innocence? I can read you all like books, and not the best-selling kind either. 
You're all under the impression that I mimicked Brisbane with that emergency call. And in order to make mimic Brisbane, I had to have been there. See where I'm going? And you think you can retain your ignorance with rodent puns? Why not? It'd be an amusing entry for the court records, huh? The trial where rodent puns saved the day and condemned the famed criminal Renwick Smith. Okay, that's enough filler. Come on, Nikki. Just try and contradict this one. I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna do. Okay. I guess I'll just press. How could somebody just temporarily come to from a coma? In all fairness, right, it isn't unheard of. An adrenaline surge, a temporary return of blood to the brain. It doesn't sound that far-fetched after all, especially when they're coming from Edgeworth. Were any prints lifted from those handprints, Edgeworth? I'm afraid not. The blood was too vicious to clearly make out a definable print. The same goes for the, for the victim's telephone as well. The telephone? Did Brisbane really pick it up himself and call for help? Ah, oh, we can't tell. Not if the prints couldn't be identified. Phoenix, you know that it's fake! Okay, whatever. Naturally, Brisbane fingerprints cover his telephone anyway. But that was the only type we could find nonetheless. Oh, well, so much for that. And this is genuine data, not just your word this time. Oh, my word has never been called into question. Uh, then what about all that business with... Never been called into question! Has it, boys? Okay, alright, you win. That's no and Gunspeak. Gunspeak being one of the 68 languages you're fluent in? But we can't tell if it's the real Brisbane or another one of your impressions. That's kind of the point, Slick. You can't go on voice alone, can you? Well, what's your alibi? Can anybody vouch for your location at the time of the crime? Over here, mate. Pick me. Pick me. Not everybody has to be up at the crack of dawn, you know. But I can vouch for him, Lock, that he would have been asleep. Th thanks, Detective Snow. Come on, is there some other way I can prove it was Hemlock who made the call? But they're good friends. Brisbane wouldn't... But Smithy would, my man. Brisbane put friendship on hold to out the man who betrayed him. This is no good unless I can prove that call wasn't made by Brisbane. How can I contradict those two statements together? Really? Your own client hatches a plan to get the Enigmium and you knew nothing about it? I thought you were working together to steal it? You got wax in yours, bub. I already said that I didn't know when and where Smithy was going to strike. I knew the plan, of course, but that was when he had a change of heart. I had no idea at the time that he planned to frame me, but when he did the deed... Even though he betrayed you, you were willing to work on a crime scene where your trail had been planted? Believe you me, champ, had I known beforehand that Smithy was trying to drop me in, Snow would have done much more than look busy and drink tea. The kind-hearted soul I was, I went about doing what I could to help Smithy. Just as there's no surefire way to tell him Mox Prince from Renwick's. Now we can't tell Brisbane's voice from his impression. I'm sure Renwick was telling the truth that Brisbane didn't make that 911 call himself. But now I need to find some other way of identifying the true caller. <clears throat> Where he states Smithy did it. I didn't know a thing about it. Uh, let me save here. Tape recording. Brisbane's call. That's not it. Okay. I don't see why that wouldn't be it, though. Maybe I put the telephone here. The tape recorder, sorry. No. Okay. 
Another way to identify the caller. Five thirty AM. Right arm broken. Maybe I say that because his arm was broken, he couldn't do it? Objection. No. <clears throat> what if I put the injury report here? Objection. Shit. What could it be then? What could it be? What could it be? Jesus Christ. I'm so bad at this. Restate Smithy did it. But you say that you had no idea about it, so... What's... What, what, what's the deal here? Do I present the telephone here? No. Okay, what if I present the telephone here? Nah. Nada. Okay, um... <clears throat> Came Robert Snow again. Protecting your client. Could we use the prints on this envelope to cross-reference them to the telephone? No, that sounds stupid. Is the solution really... Is the solution simple and I'm just being dumb? I can't tell. Because I feel like these two statements... I can't stress enough to listen to the part where he states Smithy did it. And until the police got wind of the situation, I didn't know a thing about it. You didn't know a thing about it, but you know that that Brisbane said that Smith did it. So those two statements contradict, but I can't contradict them. I can't connect it. Uh, okay. Um, what do I do? Trace to the address where they found an exterminated pest. Uh, no. I'm stumbling my way through this case, man. This is painful. This is where having another person would be helpful. Okay, so you guys know that I'm doing conflict of interest after this. One of my viewers is going to be joining me for that, net neutrality. They're going to be joining me for that Let's Play. So I will at least have another person to help me with that one. Because I have heard that that game is way more difficult than this one. And this one is already difficult, so... Or maybe I'm just stupid. It could be a combination of both, to be honest. I... Like... <clears throat> That was in the interrogation room. That doesn't matter. We do have Brisbane's prints here. So... What if I present the prints to this? Damn it. Phone call is the address. Let's try this one. Nah. No. Oh, 
scrolled. I I really don't know. I I'm actually lost now. I mean, I was lost before, but now I'm really lost. Because I feel like the answer is the answer, at least to me, it's like he shouldn't know that Brisbane, that Brisbane in quotes, said that Smith did it. He shouldn't know that because he's the statement right after he says that Brisbane said that Smith did it. He said he didn't know a thing about it. So like he shouldn't know that. So how do I prove that, though? Okay. I I have legit run out of ideas, so I think it's time for me to check the guide. Okay, so the answer is the photo. I can't remember if I tried that or not. I guess if I did try it, I would have known that I that I was on the right track, but I didn't try it. I guess. But I don't see. Yeah, I'm looking at the photo. I don't see what the issue is. Objection! There's a glaring contradiction with that statement. W what contra- No, there ain't! Whatever it is, you made it up. Know your place, shut up, and carry on! Oh, I bet that's what you'd want me to do. But I have proof Risbane wasn't the one who made the phone call that night. You deaf as well as dumb? Danny boy already said that the prints were the issue! I'm not concerned with the fingerprints. In fact, I've had enough with fingerprints. I refer to you I refer you to this photograph. Specifically the victim's left hand. Damn it. Ah I should have caught that. Specific yeah the Hmm. Oh wait a moment. His hand it's completely free of blood. It's it's what? Yes, indeed. Not a trace of blood can be seen on Brisbane's hand. How, then, did he supposedly leave a trail of blood with both hands? Wait, what? Wait. Is that what it's talking? Okay. Ah! Then, then this... This would also support my theory of crime scene tampering. The assailant must have produced these handprints himself, using Brisbane's blood. So that's why I gathered the blood in the jacket. What about his other hand? No, uh, no, all the all, the no all. Can't see it in the picture, can you? How do you know his right hand ain't drenched? He must have used that hand to pick up the phone. Objection. Wrong again, Hemlock. Brisbane never touched the phone at all. Well, it's not like you have a way to back that up, Bucko. So let's move on, yeah. Oh yes, I do. But Brisbane never touched the phone with his right hand, and this proves it. Oh my God. Okay. That was my fault. God, I need to... I need to pay attention to everything, I guess. The victim's injury report warrants another going over. I don't get it. Oh, but you will. Listen to this. Severe blunt force trauma on head and torso. Lots of internal and external bleeding. Right arm broken. Now, what part of that report just doesn't mesh with what you just said? What, what, what? What's the joke? Brisbane's right arm was broken from the beating. Would he have tried to pick up the, the phone with a broken arm? A b broken arm? And I'm not done yet. More bloody prints can be seen on the phone's number, showing who the caller was trying to reach. But if this is combined with the bloody hand that was holding the receiver, shouldn't that mean both hands were covered in blood? No, 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 that never happened! I didn't, the assailant never broke his arm, I'm innocent, happily ever after the end! That Mr. Brisbane couldn't have been the one to call for his ambulance. But his voice on the tape recording. Yes, Your Honor. That wasn't him either. That phone call Brisbane made for his own ambulance? That wasn't him. 
He really was unconscious the whole time, and has yet to awaken. Put into a near-death state from sheer brutality. To say the assailant went a little overboard would be a major understatement. It had to have been somebody who harbored true resentment towards Brisbane. And who matches that profile more than the man sat in the judge's seat? The man who can flawlessly imitate Brisbane to ensure the blame fell on Renwick Smith. Lyle Hemlock, you were the second person at the scene and the true assailant. Oh boy. He's about to crack. Detective Smith's testimony, it was all an elaborate lie? He nor I had the liberty to speak up, Your Honor. But I think we can now say that Hemlock has been controlling this case from day one. Under the guise of a bumbling detective, we were none the wiser to his machinations. Hemlock is an, indivi is an individual who dreams big and achieves bigger. He uses his several disguises and talent and voice imitation for his own ambitious gains. And this whole mess? This is just his latest venture. Yeah, now it seems it has come to an end. No. There's still like an hour and a half left. No. No, no, no. This isn't how it's supposed to go. This is all wrong. This reality is wrong. How can I make it right? How can I get it all to make sense again? Well, plan V was a bust, but at least I gave it a good, honest try. You failed, Hemlock. Just turn yourself in. Failure is always an option, but true failure is when you stop trying. Which is where plan W comes into play. Oh, God. We're gonna go through the whole fucking alphabet before this guy gets caught. Uh-oh. I really don't like where this is going. And what's plan W? I'm glad you asked, Nikki. Mostly because I was angling for somebody to ask. I figured if you're still going to throw these accusations at me that I really don't want, then I might as well just do what I should have done right from the start. Steal the shiny toy and run away. S so that's it? You're just going to run away with the Enigmium? My ultimate goal here was to take what's rightfully mine and disappear for good. The execution was less than ideal for 22 iterations, but with Plan W, the result will be the same. And in the end, isn't the result what truly counts? So, uh, hey, it's been fun. Never been a judge before, but now I can see why. You realize that by attempting to escape, you are considered the perpetrator? And do you think that we will let you get away with it? Yes. Yes, you will. What's the point in having backup if you ain't gonna use it after all? Now stand aside, or you're dead! Okay, alright. You win, buddy. You win, buddy. Oh. No, after all that, the killer can't just get away like this. But... What can we do? This was my only chance to corner him, and now it could take years to find him again. No one leaves till I give the say-so. Boys, give me ten minutes to get clear, and then you lot follow. Rob Bosch. Oh, that was... I just, I just saw a boss and just immediately went, uh... Terry Grayson. And now, for the last time, goodbye, Harry. No! I won't let you get away- Hello, Hemlock. Holy shit! You're awake! You- Oh, don't take it too hard. Just think of this experience as a learning curve. Next time you try and kill someone, make sure you've actually killed them! N no No, you're not supposed to be in my courtroom! We're long overdue for a good catch-up, mate. So how about you take your seat like a good little judge? B Brisbane? Now there's a sight for sore eyes, and I can't believe I'm thinking that. B Mr. Brisbane, is that you? But I thought you were, well, that is to say... Comatose, I believe, is the word your honor is looking for. I woke up, simple as. In very good timing, wouldn't you say, your honor? How did you get past my guys in the lobby? Well, if you can hide four Uzi-wielding thugs in dark suits amongst the audience, no one would look twice at a walking corpse in a hospital gown and with an eye patch. Or maybe your ooh, look how big I am drama distracted everyone. Who knows, huh? And being the key witness here, I have a few words of my own. Really? Such as? Well, for a start, I'd better do right by Runwick and do my best to clear his name. For the past couple of months, we've been holding regular private meetings at my house. I held them at stupid o'clock to avoid the all-seeing eye over there from knowing. 
Clearly these weren't your average tartars being held at these unusual hours. They concerned Hemlock, didn't they? Renwick had the weight of the world on his shoulders for as long as I'd known him. It took him nearly five years to finally unburden himself. Turned out, Your Honor, that a certain omniscient mobster was blackmailing him. Why is Hemlock not objecting to any of this? He's being unusually complacent. I don't like this. Neither does Edgeworth, for the looks of it. And the nature of these meetings was... Renwick put his life in danger so that mine would be spared. As a guy I barely even knew, for him to do that to me, do that for me, I... I owed it to him. I owed it to him to expose his benefactor and free him, and the rest. These meetings were more for Renwick's benefit than mine. He was able to speak freely without fear of being spied on. It became his sanctuary. Did these meetings consist, of, consist solely of planning? Hold it. Our last meeting. Something major went down, but my memory, it's kind of foggy. That uh, you were attacked? Before that, smartass! Wait, 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 he, he arrived a few hours early. He brought something to the house. An envelope, I think. That lines up with what Miss Weaver says she saw at midnight. This envelope, perchance? Y yeah, that's the one! But was inside again? I can't remember. Why can't you remember? Is it the after effects of, a, of the coma? Oh, science, will we ever understand you? No. Dare I hazard a guess as to what was inside and might jog his memory? Oh, well, uh... Maybe we'll save here. Let's see. It wouldn't be the Enigmium, because he, he had it in his eye. It wouldn't be the knife. It wouldn't be a card, I don't think. What would it be? Wouldn't it be the wire. Well, it could have been the wire, maybe, but no, I don't think so. Well, uh, I already saved, so let me just try stuff, I guess. Was it this first vein? No. No, 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 no. no okay, maybe so, so. So maybe it was a card. Okay, so maybe it was not a card. Um. It wasn't a. St it wasn't a fucking stop. Um. Maybe it was a document. Yeah. Judging by the subject matter of your meetings, it's not difficult to guess who the uh, envelopes' con contents were concerning. It wouldn't happen to have been a full document resembling this scrap, would it? What appears to be a study file of some sort on Hemlock. That. That's it. I remember now. Renwick wanted to drop it off a few hours before the meeting. I took one look at the attached picture and I flipped my lid. Because you recognize his face as a certain familiar detective? I I needed some time to think and make an action plan fast. I asked Renwick to change the meeting to later at 5 a.m. after I came up with something. Your Honor, the documents. The so-called files on Hemlock that were supposedly destroyed on order of the Chief. That was all a big fat lie, invented to cover Hemlock's actions from two days ago. Out of curiosity, Detective, what's this file all about? What, that? Oh, it's just a profile on this guy from an old case of mine. I've got some drawer space to create, so I'm shredding some old files. Actually, we're all getting rid of all... Uh, actually, we're all getting rid of our copies of these files at the moment. I don't suppose there's any chance of recovering the rest of this file from the paper shredder? Sorry, mate. This is a Ravager 3000 you're dealing with. The most powerful decimator of cotton paper on the market. Produces paper of all thicknesses to powder, to powder in an instant. Why else would Detective Snow own such a powerful shroud? To get rid of this evidence, of course. Evidence that he could have only obtained from Brisbane's house. Then he played the fool and invented a story that there were more of them. And because Chief Foida was in his pocket, it's not like he was going to disagree. This file is one of a kind and clued Brisbane in on who Hemlock really was. That's why when Hemlock got wind of this, he tried to silence the man who knew his identity. But how could he know? How on earth is this man able to know everything? He found out. All the same, he found out. That's when he planned to ambush, ambush me and frame Winrick for my murder. 
Ahem, if I can just interrupt this soap opera for a second. First Vulper, then Smithy, then Jimmy, then Nikki, then Udgy, then Edgy, then Udgy. Now you're blaming me too? Oh, what a shame. Nobody likes me. Don't play dumb, Baldy. Our meetings were always secret, yet you found out all the same. Ha! It's funny how we all think I'm, uh, I'm the one with all the answers. Hemlock knows this. Hemlock knows that. Hemlock's been spying on me. Hemlock's so handsome. First off, that kind of flattery won't get nowhere with me, to, uh, to whoever said that. But most of all... Oh. But most of all, it's something that needs proven me, laddie. But proof of what? How am I supposed to be the all-seeing god you all think I am? Granted, there was the one time I tried to be in two places at once. <sighs> Never again. Oh, I bet you tried that. Bafflingly. Somehow you found out about the meeting and Mr. Wrong better prove it right now! How do you know that there wasn't a simpler explanation for that knowledge? Smithy's been reporting to me for five years now, remember? He's like my little bro at this point. So why not accept that maybe I was tipped off about the meeting? T tipped off? I think your little friend's been playing double agent, Brisbane. Not sounding good, is it, Udgy? Well, um... That's true, then wouldn't that imply that, um... That I did it? No offense, Udgy, but use your noodle once in a while. I knew about the meeting, but that don't make me your man. How do you work that one out? If you knew they were going to meet at 5 a.m., that makes you the perfect candidate. I had heard about the meeting after Smithy had done the job, dum-dum. He did the thing to start off with, then informed Detective Snow to step in and cover his ass. For the third and final time, I had no idea when and where he was going to make his move. He's a loose cannon, that guy. He's out of control, I tell you. A likely story. But I don't think it's possible to debunk. How can I prove when he learned of the meeting? I don't believe I can, unless I can otherwise figure out how he knows everything. If we could return to the matter of how you supposedly know so much. Ah, uh, ah, uh, supposedly. This is all in your head, remember, kiddo. I assure you the basis is more than sound. You've been spying on people, not just on your Aculus members, but everybody on this case. And when there's only so f and when there's only so far a detective d disguise will take you, you s you'll seek other methods. And as somebody willing to make anything he imagines a reality, you must have had a way. Well, I don't, and that's an objective fact. Spying on everybody is certainly a tall order, and definitely for just one man. So I have to explore the realms of impossibility and ask myself, how the hell does he know everything? That's for me to know, and for you to never find out. That moment when he called me in my office. How on earth did he hear me when I was alone? Does he have listening bugs of some kind that he's able to drop all over the place? Or is it something more sophisticated? Oh, hold on a moment. That thing. I figured this out like an hour ago. I wish to present the means by which everything private has been heard by Hemlock. And thus how he knew of the meeting between Brisbane and Renwick. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the secret to Hemlock's spying abilities. Go, go, Gadget Grapevine. This here is my personal cell phone. Stellar. Utterly stellar. I think you're long overdue for an upgrade, bub. This is, a, this is 2019, after all. Wait, did this come out in 2019? Or is this just, like, in line with the uh, timeline? Whatever. Your cellular telephone is the answer, Mr. Wright? Not on its own, Your Honor. Edgeworth? I think I'm beginning to follow. I'm sure Wright will explain why we're taking our phones out in court. Oh wow, your phone sucks too. The phones are the answer, Your Honor. The reason Hemlock has been listening in on us. Not just ours, but the personal phones of the entire police department. Heck, there could be even more around the world. The precinct would be just a drop in the ocean. You see, Your Honor, there was something of a fuss at the precinct yesterday. Turns out there's a strange unknown file looking on a lot of cell phones. Believed to be akin to a form of malicious virus. A virus, you say? Didn't something seem to crop up in a recent trial? I better hope I don't catch it anytime soon. If you own a cell phone, then it's possible it may already be infected. But the question on everybody's lips is, infected with what? A file going by the name of Grapevine. Indeed, I found this very file on my phone yesterday. The issue was in the fact that it appeared inactive, and its functions remain unknown. 
So despite the alarm, the police couldn't claim it was of any importance to our case. But I'll bet my bottom dollar that it's very much involved. The thought hit me that Hemlock's knowledge appeared to come from sources that he'd heard. At first I thought listening bugs, but a dreamer like Hemlock wouldn't settle for average bugging. Something he said to me yesterday resonated. I'm always teaching myself new skills every day to meet my needs. I want to develop my own custom computer virus to shake up a government? I take up programming. But you already did that, didn't you, Hemlock? Grapevine was designed by you for the purpose of listening in on private conversations. And by infecting people's phones, you created a network of mobile listening bugs for yourself. All controlled and monitored from your very own cell phone. Oh yeah, and for those of you trying to call the police right now... There's really no need to bother. What did you just do? Deployed a jamming signal within a 100 meter radius. Amazing what apps can do these days, huh? So when Hemlock claims to know something, and I hope you'll excuse the joke... He heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> Order! Order! Shut up the lot of you! D jeez, which will get first, the desk or his head? Ugh, nice baseless conjecture there, fella. And I suppose you're just gonna stand for that, Udgy? Your reactions don't exactly exude confidence, Mr. Hemlock. I think it's the temporary loss of control he tends to freak out, freak out the most over. My reactions again? Since when did this country's co courts operate on reactions? I'd say something about how he seems to have forgotten the goons at his command. But it's the best I don't. Of course I'm willing to retract everything I just said if it's all conjecture. So you have no problem with us examining your phone? That will be the only way to confirm the theory. Uh, cat got your tongue, buddy? Um, no, 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 no need to bother with that. I, I'm in, I'm in control here. I'm the judge of this trial. I, I adjudicate the evidence. I accept or refuse what I want. Huh? There's the answer to that then. It all makes sense. Everyone carries a phone these days. Brunwick was right. What did he say? That's why he never brought his cell phone to our meetings. I thought it was paranoia at first, but grapevine. But if the defendant never brought his phone, how did... He didn't. But there was mine. I swear, if I find grapevine here... Well, what do you know? You see, Your Honor, I believe Ride is correct. Hemlock has developed a malicious file to somehow turn cell phones into listening bugs. That much is certain, but how can we prove it if Hemlock doesn't surrender his... Wait, what is he doing? What? What, what did you just do? Nothing. So where do we go from here, huh, folks? Now the grapevine's been sussed. I guess it's possible I did know about the meeting. Big deal. Uh, what was that sound? What, uh, who said that? Who's saying that? This person from Hong Kong. But it is off, honey. Grapevine was a very interesting project for me to work on. Needed some way to keep an eye on the global Aculus agents. Guess that's where the ambassador went wrong, huh, Edgy? Hey, my phone's beeping too. But I wanted to make it fun to work on, so I just let my creativity flow. Thought of all sorts of practical features to dump into Grapevine, and so my know-how expanded. And mine? What's going on here? Mine too. What's happening? Unlimited access to the microphones of infected devices. Completely untraceable. Erase calls from phone logs. The ability to reveal the global location of each and every Aculus agent. The ability to spread wirelessly from phone to phone. Did he just infect every single phone in the room with Grapevine? And a feature I like to call Plan X. What did you just do? Answer me now! It's just as you say, Brisbane. People these days can't live without their precious phones. Which is why I know each and every one of you has one. 
Well, except Smithy, which is a plus. D dare I ask what this Plan X feature is? My crowning achievement. I can't believe I've coded a way to make this happen. Well, it's probably best for everyone that I don't get to test it out. Man, I'm still pretty stoked to the prospect. Just stop beating around the bush and spit it out. In the extremely rare event that plans A to W flopped and I found myself in this situation, I coded a failed deadly feature in the grapevine that would serve as my plan X. At the press of a button, I can make your cell phones explode. That's right. Boom. W what? You must be joking. Impossible. You actually managed to program a self-destruct sequence in the grapevine? I know. I'm amazing, aren't I? No such thing is impossible in my head, buddy boy. Aculus was the tip of the iceberg with what I can put my mind to. So, so naturally, you plan to blow us all up? Now everybody's here, Jimmy and Brisbane included, under one roof. Wait, Hemlock, maybe we can talk this out. Unlikely, champ, but go on. Who's, what's the defense's defense? Well, um... Well, won't you be blowing yourself up in the process? Objection. The blast radius per phone is only a meter wide. Even if every phone in this building goes off, I'm too far away for them to reach. And if anyone has the idea of throwing their phones at me, I'll detonate them instantly, and no citizen wants to walk out of here with a murder charge. Besides, I wouldn't be a very pleasant ghost to have around. Let's just leave it there, yeah. No, 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 no. This is impossible. How could he have programmed a, a, a digital bomb? Consider Plan X the be-all and end-all of what I of to what I can achieve. All you naysayers out there will be converted. You'll all see. Well, actually, you won't. You'll be dead. That's the joke. So what's your plan X? You're just going to walk out of here again? No, dum-dum, that was plan W. Till you showed up, Brisbane. You forced me to do this. So you'll vacate the building and let us all live? Or you just want to blow us all up for the hell of it to witness your precious, precious creation? How many times do I have to say it before it sticks? I am not a killer! I don't want to kill. I've never wanted to kill. But you all just have to make my life so damn difficult! You maintain your innocence, Mr. Hemlock? But, but you admitted to us earlier that you used this te technical software and thingy to... To none of the rendezvous, Your Honor, yes. I think we all heard it loud and clear. Yet Hemlock denies intent to kill, while threatening us all with explosive cell phones. Clearly his claims cannot be trusted, Your Honor. What is it you want, Mr. Hemlock? Why threaten these innocent people? Why threaten these innocent people, he says. Because I know for a fact that one of you is not... Ah, uh, Smithy. For heaven's sake, how much more control does he want to show off? He's chosen not to simply leave this time, when he's, in, when he's in a perfect position to do so. So what I'm proposing here is one final statement to clear my name. You'll listen to it, you'll agree with it, and then I'll leave. Smithy gets a sentence. I get my enigmium. We all go home happy. Sound good to you, kiddos? Wait a minute. Are you really going to go through with this? Plan X was the last plan I made, Nikki. Thus, it's my final plan, so it has to work. Smithy will be declared guilty, and I, I'll be leaving this place with the last word. I'll prove to you all that no one sullies my name after everything I've achieved. I have an idea, and I really, really hope this works in our favor. If you wish to make a final statement declaring your innocence as a killer, then I wish to analyze your argument in full. The adrenaline must have gone to your head, champ. What makes you think I'm going to just let you do that? Control appears to be Hemlock's main priority above all else. Despite having the upper hand ever since he was exposed, he only tried to escape once. Now he's threatening to blow the courtroom up. There's nothing to stop him from trying again. But he's bound by his pride. He has to leave the court on a high note. And I'm going to show that pride comes before a fall. You've been saying how you want to prove your control to everybody here. So what would really show that off more than outwitting an opponent? If you let me analyze your watertight argument, that should be more than enough, don't you think? psychology getting into his head making him think stuff my chance to show everybody what I can do if I can build an argument and prove that's right this court has come to a decision based on my own reasoning I don't see the harm in a good proper argument Phew. playing on his Achilles heel actually worked I accept your challenge Hemlock not only will I prove you were the mastermind behind Brisbane's assault but I'll prove you is the mastermind behind the murders of Maplethorpe and Docs, too. 
and therefore expose you as the Boogeyman's serial killer. P pretty tall order for you, don't you think? Trying to blame me for three murders all in one? You've backed yourself into a dead end here, bucko. You can't scare me into backing out now. I know you're the mastermind for all three crimes, and now's the time for evidence. I'll prove my innocence. Then you'll all see. <sighs> and we're gonna do that next time. We're in the end game now. <laughs>